So we're back with Stuart and the Argentines have surrendered. Um, what were your initial thoughts, yours and the ship's company after it? Did you have parties or was it a case of we just want to get home? I think people wanted to get home and there was a great feeling of relief. I can't remember that there were vast parties, although <coughs> there were one or two things. Where on, on, the, on the way home, we, everyone was very tired. And so the captain introduced a routine in the ship that, um, you know, you're supposed to sleep for 12 hours a day. So I think a lot of people did that. Do you think it was the tide was the relief that it was over, so they were allowed to sort of relax mentally and physically? Well, I think you're right, yes, I think so. But, and you, uh, had, um, you had an extra person on board, didn't you, for a week or so? Yes, in, 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 in Port Stanley we had um, a Brigadier General Menendez, who was the Argentine commander on board in the Falklands, and he was with us for about a week, I think. Mm -hmm. And by the... Geneva Convention, he, had to, he and his staff had to be looked after very well, which we did. Okay, and so they, they were with you for a week and they yes. were, I take it they were put up in a, an officer's cabin? And they were put up in the um, a Brigadier's cabin, I think, yes. And did you have any contact with um, General, General Brigadier Menendez at all? Only that I lent him my, uh, my radio so he could listen to what was happening in Argentina and what was going to happen to him. Sounds very kind and civilised. <laughs> so you you arrive back in Portsmouth with um, another ship. Uh, yes, we, we followed um, HMS Intrepid in. Intrepid was the senior of the two ships. Ah, okay. so. so you arrive back to Portsmouth, and did you mention it was a hundred days after you left? Yes, exactly a hundred days. And what was the atmosphere at Portsmouth? Well, of course, it was extraordinary for us because we saw all these. Um, crowds and the round tower and lining from South Sea northwards and uh, people in, in Gosport and there were aircraft flying over, there were bands playing, the uh, uh, ships were cheering. It was a wonderful day. It was, wasn't it? And in fact I was actually there, but you probably wouldn't have seen me, I was at the Gosport Ferry pontoon waving oh, yeah, because good. I was 15 and took a day off school. Yeah. I think we all did, to be honest. I think my family were up, actually up at um, where, we were, where we were going to birth, at, up at North Corner, so uh, I was looking forward to seeing them. The thing that strikes me just on the side is when we spoke earlier, you said when you left the harbour, people went and wrote letters to their girlfriends mm. and wives, and some of those letters were letters, should they not make it back? Yes. I would imagine that maybe the, the relief those individuals found when they maybe found those letters again um, is something that um, can't be underestimated. No, no, everyone was very relieved, but of course we had we had we had uh, uh, some notice uh, on the way back of, of not 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 being about to be killed anymore. So that so was, that was uh, really and hence lots of sleeping. So when you um, pulled alongside, is there a procedure as to who can leave the ship first, etc.? Well, I'm not sure there's a formal procedure, but usually. Um, if someone's going to go down the gangway first, uh, it's not usually the captain. The captain sends the youngest sailor on board, so he went down. I forgot, unfortunately, I've forgotten who it was, but he knows who he is. And <laughs> how old is he? He'd be about 18, I think. And then, so you alight and you get some time at home with your family? Yes, we did, although we were, uh, we had to restore the ship. And then we were off uh, again on a, uh, thing to the Baltic, I think, and we were doing the Dartmouth training, so we didn't actually have very long at home. How long was it? A couple of weeks, or? Yeah, I think so. Right, and then you're back off again. How was the family to see you? <coughs> I'm sorry. How was the family to see you? <coughs> oh, they were relieved. <laughs> <laughs> and the children. And the children, yeah. And the children. So, is <coughs> sorry. Sorry. <coughs> so, is there anything you would take? from the Falklands that you um, that stay with you about the Falklands? Well, uh, the lessons learned, if you see what I mean, there were lots of sort of technical lessons learned, but I think really um, uh, to succeed in the Falklands, we needed uh, resilience, we needed training, and we had uh, a ship's company or other soldiers and everyone else who actually were very good at their job and did it very well. 
And that made all the difference, really. Absolutely, because the Argentines had lots and lots of uh, conscripts or people who didn't want to be there. Some of them didn't even know where the Falklands were. So th their motivation was much less than ours. And also, I suppose the motivation for us was we were going to recover British people from foreigners. Which is, um, the job had to be done. Yes. So we spoke earlier that um, you also served in Borneo in the conflict and we maybe will have a chat another day about that. Mm. So having served in two conflicts in your military career, is there anything you take from, from that in relation to life as such? Well, of course, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just very grateful um, that the, the Navy gave me a good career. And uh, I think really the, the, the value of uh, training and determination, I think, was the real thing which uh, enabled us to succeed in both of those. Mm. And you had the, so obviously military people, your training is for conflict. So the fact that you served in two conflicts, I think it's fair to say that you... Oh, yes. Yes, I mean, I, I, I had had the Queen's shilling for all those years, 37 years I was uh, serving. And uh, so therefore, I think it was good to be repay it a little bit. Absolutely. So you, you had the training and you delivered, mm. so to speak. And day-to-day -day life now, what do you think, having um, put your life in danger, what do you think you appreciate day-to-day -day life? Well, I don't think of it as putting my life in danger every day, but I did. I do appreciate uh, calm retirement. Yeah. And, and the family and all this sort of stuff. I'm not uh, serving anymore, so um, I can enjoy the fruits of retirement. Yes, absolutely. Because you've done, you've done what you had to do, mm. and more so. So, just to conclude, you live in Gosport, and you've lived in Gosport since 1967. Um, and we won't mention that as a year I was born. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, what do you like about Gosport? Well, I, I like uh, Stokes Bay, and I like the history, and I like the fact that there's lots of things going on in the town but also in the Solent, which, which I'm looking at now. Yes, so it really is a lovely place to live. Mm. We've really just um, skimmed over your sort of involvement in the Falklands, mm. but um, I really will thank you that you actually shared what you shared today. Um, and I will um, hopefully see you another day and we can maybe discuss Borneo, if that's okay. Certainly, with another ego trip for me. <laughs> thank you.